So I've had my 4K Fire Stick for over a year now, and I can say with confidence that my stick has never performed as well as it's doing now. I mean, moving around, clicking on menus, everything just seems to be super fast, super smooth, and super instant. And I would say the main reason for that is that on my device, all of these things that we see here have been completely frozen. Now, freezing applications is completely different to terminating applications because as we've seen with other applications like Task Manager and Background Apps and Process List, you can just stop something, but there's nothing stopping the application or process from starting up again. Whereas when you freeze something, that application or process can never start again. And that means that can never consume any more memory on your device ever again. So in this video today, let me show you how you can also follow this process on your Fire Stick. I'll also answer some of the questions I had from my previous video, and we're going to do all of this process using the standard remote control. So no external keyboards, no typing out commands. We can do everything with the standard remote control. So with all of that being said, Let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so I've just undone all of the changes on my system. And looking at the top there, we can see my device normally has around about 175 to maybe 185 megs of free memory. And as we know, on a Fire Stick, when your device does start running low on free memory, that's when you normally start getting buffering in your application. So ideally, we want to have the most free memory as possible. So we can say just as a benchmark that before we made any changes on my Fire Stick, my Fire Stick would normally have around about 165 megs of free memory. Okay, so as per normal, the first thing we're going to do is open up Downloader and we're going to make a connection to my website, which is just http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash tduk, that's me, and the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and click on go or press the play button on your remote. Now, once you get to my website, you want to click on the hamburger menu, which is this thing over here, and select the option for tutorials. I've had a couple of questions where people say that when I do actually post my videos, they're not able to see the latest tutorial on my website. And the reason for that is, is because I use caching on my website, you may be looking at an older version of my page. And the way you refresh the page in Downloader is you press the context key, the one with the three lines, and just select the option, disable JavaScript and reload page. And that will then refresh the page for you. But because we actually want to keep JavaScript enabled, let's press the context key again. And this time we'll just select enable JavaScript and reload page. Okay, once the page loads, let's scroll down. And the tutorial we're looking for is this one here, which is freeze system applications on your Fire Stick. Let's click on that. And this will give you the three things that you need to install on your device. The first thing is the remote ADB shell. Second is Icebox. Icebox is actual application which allows you to freeze system applications. You can also use it to freeze normal applications, but really the key thing we're looking for is to freeze some of that bloatware, some of that built-in Amazon system bloatware. So that's what Icebox does. Now the Shizuka Manager is an application which gives Icebox the correct permissions it needs because typically for you to do anything on the system or to make system type changes, you have to have admin access or root access on your device. But because we don't have that access, we can use the Shizuka Manager to give us that temporary permission. So download these three things onto your device, you click on them, you scroll down, and you click on the green download button. So download and install those three applications on your device. Once you've installed them, let's press the home key. And we're now going to open up the Shizuku Manager, which is this thing here. And the only reason we're going to start here is because this is actually going to tell us that one command that we need to copy and paste into the remote ADB shell. And that's the command that gives the Shizuku Manager access for Icebox to go ahead and do its stuff. So let's open that up first. Okay, so we're now going to bring up the virtual mouse. So double press the play button. There it is. And we want to click on where it says view ADB command. Let's click on that. There's the command there. So even though that's the whole command, we actually don't need the ADB shell part because we're already going to make the ADB shell connection via remote ADB. But I'll show you how you can modify this command in just a second. So for now, let's click on copy. So we've now copied this command into our copy paste buffer. I can now press the home key on the remote. I'm now going to start remote ADB shell. So here for the IP address, because we're making a local connection onto our Fire Stick, we can leave the IP address as 127.0.0.1. .0 .0 
if you are making a remote ADB connection from another device, like maybe your tablet or maybe your computer or your cell phone, you need to change this IP address to your actual IP of your Fire Stick. And you can find that out by going to your settings, My Fire TV, about and then network and there you'll get your actual IP address but again you need to use that if you're doing this on a different device than your actual Fire Stick. Okay so for now let's click on connect and then you'll see this Mantis prompt which means you have made a successful ADB connection onto your device. All we need to do now is, is just paste that command that we previously copied. Now to do that we need to bring up the virtual mouse, double press the play button. Now you want to bring your virtual mouse to the bottom here and you want to click here and this will then invoke or bring up the virtual keyboard so let's click there we then want to scroll up and right at the top here where you have the line where you'd be normally typing something in you can now click here and hold the select button so press and hold let go and we can see we have the option there to click on paste so that's how you basically copy and paste commands with the standard fire stick remote control so let's now click on paste there's a long command there, but as I previously mentioned, we need to remove the ADB shell part of that command. So the way we do that is if you bring the cursor down, we can see it goes from a circle to this thing here, to a cursor, but even if it doesn't change guys, all we need to do is just keep clicking at the start of this command because that will actually bring that cursor back. I mean, the cursor we can see at the moment is actually on just after the H, but if I click here now, we can see that cursor has now been moved back. So if I press left a few times, a little bit, and now click here and we can see slowly slowly as I'm just clicking the select button that cursor is slowly but surely <laughs> moving back so click slowly keep going almost there so just as we get the cursor before the SH okay there's the H there's the S one more back okay so now we can see that the cursor is behind the S I can now turn off the virtual mouse by pressing the play button once I can now press down a few times and I now want to click on delete. So I keep pressing delete now, so delete, delete, and we can see that the ADB shell is now being removed from that command. So the command just starts SH and then da da da. Okay, so I can now click on run. Now, as soon as I press run, I'm actually going to press the back button on the remote just so you can see what's happening in the background. So let's click on run and let's press the back button. And here you can see it's now actually invoking the Shizuku manager and as soon as it does that it actually launches the application for you and what that means is this is now ready to give Icebox the correct permissions that it needs. Now to give this permissions let's bring up the virtual mouse, let's scroll to the top. Now in case you didn't know guys the way you scroll up and down with the virtual mouse is the forward button is to scroll down, see that's scrolling down and the context key which is the three lines is how you scroll back up and here it says authorized application zero. I'm going to click on that yeah, we can see by default it's like that. So when you click on it, that then enables the application. So I can now press the home key and I can now start Icebox for the first time. Here we are. I can now press right on the remote and again. And it's now asking you how you're going to give Icebox the correct permissions that it needs. So let's bring up the virtual mouse. And let's now click on more because we don't have root. We're not device owner but we do have the Shizuka manager on our device. So let's click on that. And this message is just telling you that once you've done this, if you do reboot your device, although all those applications will stay frozen, if you want to make any changes to those applications, like maybe you want to unfreeze something, or maybe you want to add something extra into the icebox, you will then have to type in this command again. But if you're happy with your frozen applications, you can reboot your device many times as you want, and those applications will permanently stay frozen. Okay, let's now click on OK. And there we are, guys. We have now enabled our icebox via the Shizuka manager. And I can now start adding in applications I want to freeze. So using the virtual mouse, let's go down. Let's click on where it says apps. Now you can actually freeze normal applications if you want to. So let's say, for example, I want to freeze my browser over here, DuckDuckGo, or want to freeze or clean master. You can do that. And then that means those applications won't be allowed to run on your device. But the way I see it is if you're not using these applications, instead of just freezing them, you might as well just uninstall them. But the key thing that we're looking for is the system applications, because unfortunately they're the things that we cannot uninstall, but if you're not using them, let's freeze them. So let's go over to system. We get the warning here. And let me just reiterate that warning that 
freezing system applications can cause serious, serious impact on your device. And if you don't know what you're doing, I highly advise not to just start freezing random applications. The only apps and processes I'm going to show you is the things that I've tested personally myself, but because it is system type applications, there's always that element of risk. So do bear that in mind before continuing. Okay, let's now click on got it. Now, when I first saw this list, I thought, really, is that really everything? But what it is, is, is that the hidden applications and hidden system processes are not shown by default. And the way we show that is if you go over to the menu on the top right, and we can see we have the option here, include hidden. And when you click on that, that shows everything. And as we can see here, guys, there literally is a gazillion things running on my Fire Stick, whether I like it or not. And all these things are consuming valuable system resources, consuming memory, and potentially slowing me down. Okay, so let's start right at the top. And I'll show you how we can add all of these into the icebox and get back our valuable memory. So starting right at the top, the very first thing we're going to add to the list is Alexa shopping. So let's click on that. And we can see we get the tick mark. Next up, we have Amazon free time. Let's click on that. Next, we have this Amazon metric service. So we don't care about device metrics. Let's click on that. And this one, because it's a hidden application, we have to select the option add to list. Okay, that's three things so far. Let's scroll down. Okay, we have Amazon Music. Now, of course, guys, if you do actually use Amazon Music or Amazon Photos or Amazon Free Time, then don't freeze those applications. The only reason I'm freezing them is because I don't use them on my device and I really just want to get the maximum performance I can get. Let's go over to Amazon Photos. Let's select that. Now, the good thing you can do is once you've actually added all these to the list is you can go to the menu on the top right and you can say only show me the frozen applications because this way you can then compare what you have with what I have on my device. So let's now look at only frozen. And here we can see I've actually frozen a total of 27 applications or processes on my device. And of course this screenshot will be available on my tutorials page if you want to double check to make sure you guys have the same stuff as me. So now that all of that's in the list, let's press the back button. And here is the entire list here one more time. So it starts with Alexa shopping and ends with Prime Video. So that's all the applications in our icebox. Let's now actually freeze them. And the way we do that is we go over here and click on this blue button. And as soon as you click on that button, that's going to go ahead and permanently freeze all of those processes so they just cannot start on your system ever again, which in turn means you'll have a lot more free memory than before. So let's click on that now. And we get the message that they're now all frozen. So, and there we can just see we've gone from about 165 mega free memory to over 450 meg, guys. So that really is a massive amount of improvements. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching and many thanks for staying till the end. If you did find this video useful, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.